Hi, my name is Chris Ying, and today I'm going to be making a very authentic to me dish that I ate growing up that you've all had at Panda Express. It's broccoli beef, beef and broccoli. I don't want to talk about whether or not this dish is authentic because truly, I couldn't care less if it is. Um, it's, it's a stir fry as far as I'm concerned. And I think people like it a lot because people like beef and they like broccoli. And I just started slicing that broccoli idly, even though I don't need to. I was at a chain Chinese restaurant pretty recently with my children. And I was just shocked that they even have things in that steam table on offer other than broccoli, beef, and orange chicken because who's ordering anything else? So there's nothing super complicated about this recipe. You can make it, and then once you know how to make this, you'll know how to make basically any stir fry using some different combination of flavors. All right, let's do a quick rundown on the ingredients you're gonna need today. Starting with the beef part of broccoli beef. This is flat meat. Uh, when I was a kid, we ate flank steak, uh, which is part of this, all part of the same sort of family of flank steak, hanger steak, flat meat, bavette. They're all sort of from that piece of the cow in this, I call this the, the sexy, <laughs> sexy vicinity of the, of the, of the animal. Um, you can see like when people talk about beef, it's, it's always talking about the grain. You can see the grain really clearly in these, whatever. Find a flat piece of meat. It used to be flank steak, that got more expensive. Flat meat is a thing today. I would say probably an equal weight of broccoli. So maybe a pound of beef, a pound of broccoli, a little two, three inch knob of ginger, some soy sauce, sesame oil, sugar in some form. We're using agave today, but you can just use regular granulated sugar. Oyster sauce. Um, this is not my preferred brand necessarily, but it's here. Uh, Cornstarch, necessary for both marinating and for sauce thickening. Uh, I'm gonna do a little funny thing here today and I'm gonna cr grind some black pepper into this because my kids aren't here to complain about that tiny soup son of spice that's gonna get in there. And I think that uh, black pepper in stir fry is really, really delicious. And then whatever neutral oil you have, this is vegetable oil. You know, grapeseed is for when you're cool. Vegetable is for when you're out of grapeseed. So those are the ingredients and let's get into it. So. The first thing you have to do with any stir fry is marinate the meat. And uh, in this case, like I was saying earlier, we've got flat meat. And you'll hear, whether it's in Western cooking or Asian cooking or whatever, that the most tender way to slice meat is against the grain. And I think a lot of people have a hard time understanding what that means. This piece of steak is going to show you very clearly what that means. You can see the grain is all of these, the striations of the muscles going this way. And so the pieces of meat you want are pieces that are gonna cut those into small little uh, sections. So um, obviously I'm not, I'm not about to slice this all this way because nobody wants <laughs> like an eight inch long piece of beef in their broccoli beef, or maybe you do, I don't know. I mean, listen, no kink shaming. Uh, so I'm gonna go with the grain into chunks of about the size that I want these. And then I'm gonna go against the grain this way in thin little strips. And I'm gonna slice the correct way instead of backwards like I was doing a second ago. Uh, and I'm gonna use my little bowl as a receptacle, a beef receptacle. And again, you can sort of do this into like you, I've seen other, you know, broccoli beefs, beef and broccolis where the beef is much sliced more like on the bias and you get kind of a flatter piece. I, I didn't grow up that way. I grew up with little fajita style strips. So that's how I like to do it. And that's how I'm gonna make you do it. Cause I'm in charge of you now. I'm your daddy. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm not your dad. Truth be told, 
I haven't made broccoli beef for a while. Did I say earlier that my kids are into this? I don't think I've ever made this for my kids. I think they've only ever had this at Panda Express and stuff. So uh, I'm really going off of pure memory and genetics here in making this broccoli beef for you. Um, all right, I think that was about a pound of beef. Uh, pew, that didn't go where I wanted it to go. There's a lot of different names and reasons and rationales for why cornstarch plays such a role in uh, stir fries. People talk about it as velveting. People say it's a, it creates a coating. People say it absorbs moisture. People say it's tenderizing. Um, there's, there's something to all of that, and there's also not. I do it because I always have. And it does, it does end up with more tender meat. Tender meat. Um, okay, so I would say that's about a tablespoon of cornstarch. Uh, let's call it a tablespoon and a half of soy sauce, oyster sauce. Ooh, that's a runny oyster sauce. Another tablespoon or so. And these marinade ingredients are basically the exact same ingredients that are gonna go into the final sauce, gravy. Um, a little sesame oil, just to dabble, do ya? A little sugar. Almost forgot. Just a sprinkle of MSG. So this was in every marinade, every stir fry my parents made growing up. My dad didn't know it was MSG because it was called something else. But that's a secret. In Chinese, we call it Wei Jing. Um, and that's it. Let that all just hang out. I am gonna marinate this for exactly as long as it takes me to prep the rest of the ingredients. I'm gonna peel some ginger. This piece of ginger is like just at the very end of its life. It's getting old and shriveled and a little bit uh, pliant. It's not so snappy as those young gingers, you know what I mean? Not everything is sort of bouncing back the way it used to with uh, when the ginger was young, but there's nothing wrong with it. it. Smells delightful. Man, what a miracle this thing is. Do you, like, do you ever think about that? Ginger's a, 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 a GD miracle. It's an unbelievable ingredient. Just like to pull a root out and for it to just have this insane, just this knobbly, nubby, knobbly hand, brown hand to have so much spice and freshness and delightful juiciness. What an insane ingredient. I forgot garlic. Let me go find some garlic. I was almost just not gonna use garlic because I didn't wanna walk in the other room, but I, I decided to do it for you. But that's about as necessary as garlic is. If the garlic is too far away, you don't need it. So the other thing about making broccoli beef or anything like this is it's really just a matter of getting everything plossed out, as they say having all your ingredients ready to go because the stir fry is gonna go quick. <clears throat> so actually when I was in college and I would cook for myself, I would, mar I would marinate this meat before I went to um, class. When I went to class, you know what I mean? I wasn't like, toga, toga. <laughs> and then you could come home and just have, you can cook this whole thing in four minutes if you have everything done. You can mince this or just do it thin. You know what, I did this, I'm gonna let this be a lesson to me. This is a lesson to me and to you all because I'm doing this in an inefficient way. What I should do just get this broccoli cooking. Whole thing with broccoli for me is just making sure that you are breaking it down into uniform size. 
uh, I just really don't, I, I don't cop to undercook broccoli. Bums me out. So you just need them all to cook evenly. So about equal parts broccoli to beef. I wonder if there's some sort of psychological meaning to whether you refer to it as beef and broccoli, making beef the primary ingredient, or you call it broccoli beef, and you think of it as a broccoli first type of thing. I've, I always said broccoli beef, but I don't know. I think it's just, it's a, there's a flavor association I feel like with, with beef in particular with this dish. You know, I think that people, the stir fries of my childhood were, well, strangely enough, we ate, we, did, we ate a lot of pork, but um, pork was never really the sort of primary stir fry ingredient ever. Uh, the stir fries of my childhood were, weirdly enough, they were onions and beef, which is another dish I could make and show you guys. I know it sounds weird, but it's literally just stir fried onions with beef and oyster sauce um, and asparagus with chicken. These were the stir fries we ate. I don't know why. And I don't know why people, you know, broccoli doesn't get the, it's not chicken and broccoli or pork and broccoli. That's a good question. Um, okay, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm gonna get everything prepped so that we can just rock and roll straight through here. If I'm cooking for my kids uh, and I'm making a stir fry, they, they like the taste of ginger. They don't know what it is, but they like it. And so I, and they, will, they don't want a, ch a piece of ginger. So if I'm doing a stir fry with the kids, I will actually just do chunks of ginger like this. Just peel on and everything. I will toss that in with the, to the oil so that it can kind of flavor the whole dish and then I can pluck them out and the kids don't have to deal with them. Uh, when, it's, when it's a uh, more adult situation, I will even, either leave it in matchsticks because I, I actually know. <laughs> White people love ginger and they want to like chomp it down it's, it never ceases to amaze me how much, I mean, if, if, if you're a white person who doesn't like ginger, that's one thing. But if you're a white person who likes ginger, man, do you ever love ginger? And you will go to the sushi bar and you will just snack on that, on that uh, ginger at the table, at the, at the counter. But, so I'll leave it in matchsticks for white people, for Asian people who just want the flavor of it and, and find it offensive to have to eat a whole big chunk of ginger, uh, I will do it minced like this. So those are the three, those are the three different ginger slicing schools. Kids, just big old chunks that you can remove. Uh, cooking for your white wife, big chunks of ginger so she can chew on them. <sighs> mom and dad are home, mom and dad are in town. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try to get this all to come together pretty quickly. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be smart about this. Ordinarily, I'd have a little plastic tub, but I'm just gonna go, it's, 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 we're launching the Any Day IO line right now. I'm gonna go all IO all the time right here. So I'm gonna make my, this is, this is not necessarily how they do it in a restaurant, but this is how I, my parents made stir fries, which is to basically prep your sauce in advance and just have it here. So, uh, soy sauce, sesame oil, A little sugar, uh, oyster sauce. Oh God, that's a lot of oyster sauce. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this. And this is the point at which you taste it because I'm gonna add cornstarch to this next. And I don't love just eating a bunch of cornstarch, so I want a little more sugar I want a little more soy. And the sesame oil, like I said, a, a little sesame oil goes a long way. It's pretty pronounced. Um, I 
That's pretty good. Uh, okay, so I don't want a ton of cornstarch. I don't. I don't want to make it necessarily gloopy, gloop, gloop glop, glip glop. But I do want to have some body to it, so that's what the cornstarch comes into play. And this is a super hacky way of doing this to make turn the whole thing into a slurry instead of making your sauce and thickening it with a slurry. But that's the sauce. So there's my components. This is a non-stick wok, a non-stick flat bottom wok. This is what I grew up, my parents cooked in, all non-stick. I cook in non-stick at, at home for myself. I love, love the flavor of a, a real carbon steel wok with super, super high heat. It's, you get some, you get wok hay, you know, the, the flavor of, of just vaporizing oils, hitting a insanely hot pan. You cannot imitate it. I'm just a little too lazy to worry about the upkeep of a, of a real wok, so I don't, um, I don't use it at home. Uh, nothing against it, it's just like the reality is I use this wok and not, not a, a real um, carbon steel wok. I already forgot something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna par cook this veg. So the, the whole idea with a stir fry really, when you're doing it in like a big family size portion in a not ripping, ripping, ripping hot wok, and uh, even actually, you know what, frankly, in a, in, a, in a Chinese restaurant, they will always have like a big pot of water at a boil. It's, there's always so much water happening in a Chinese kitchen. It's like cooking in water world. And they will blanch either in oil or in water. They'll blanch the veg. They will partially stir fry the meat. And then you bring it all together with the sauce. So this is how, genuinely how you would do it in a Chinese restaurant. What I'm gonna do in place of having a big pot of water to par cook my broccoli is I'm gonna do it in the microwave with a, just like a little bit of, you can use just salt. I'm gonna use a little Momofuku savory salt because it's, it's here and uh, I love it. Uh, and then a little bit of water in there, with just a splash of water. And I'm gonna put it in for about four minutes at like medium high, medium high. So steam the broccoli in the microwave for about four minutes. I'm doing it medium, medium high power. Uh, meanwhile, let's get this going. So what I'm gonna do is a little neutral oil, let that get hot, let the oil sort of heat up and expand and get liquidy. Get all that meat we marinated. Here's the thing, you don't have to cook this all the way through. Nor are you ever really gonna get deep, dark browning this way. I'm just getting it like 80% of the way done and timing it with that over there. So, you wanna set this aside. Ah, my mic cut out. So I'm gonna have to walk you through the rest of this via voiceover. So once the beef is out, give the pan a quick wipe with a paper towel, then add a little neutral oil and your aromatics, your garlic and ginger. You don't wanna get any color here. You just want them to kind of bloom and flavor the oil so that they permeate the dish. Once those have sweat for a second, add the blanched broccoli and toss that all through. I tasted one of these florets before putting it back in and noticed that it could all use a little more salt. So I'm gonna season it with a little extra sprinkle of salt and then toss through one more time. The broccoli is already mostly cooked. It was cooked in the microwave, so you're not trying to cook this here. You're just trying to get it sort of flavored and get that oil spread throughout the dish. And you reintroduce the beef, which is also partially cooked, toss that all through. And this is a little touch. I woke up last night with this fever dream in the middle of the night. 
that I wanted to make this broccoli beef dish, but make it super black peppery. So I'm adding a bunch of fresh cracked black pepper. You don't have to do so if you don't want to, but I think it is pretty delicious. Once you've cracked in that pepper, add in the sauce that we mixed together earlier. Make sure you give it a nice stir before you introduce it to the pan so the cornstarch gets distributed evenly. Uh, toss now for a minute or so just to coat everything and get the sauce thickening. Everything should be cooked. Once the sauce is up to temperature, the beef, the broccoli, if you've timed this all perfectly well like we have today, then it's all gonna come together at exactly the same time. There's not gonna be an undercooked piece of broccoli or an overcooked piece of meat. You need to bring the sauce to a boil to get it fully thickened. I told you, I woke up last night and I was just thinking, God, I want this to be black peppery. I'm just gonna go totally ridiculous style on the black pepper. Uh, but there you have it. That's, it's starting to thicken up. If it's too thick for you, if you want it to feel less gloopy, you can add a little more water, but this is American Chinese food. That's what it's supposed to look like. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's no way my kids would handle this much black pepper, but I love it. If you don't want, if you don't want black pepper, if you didn't wake up in the middle of the night last night thinking, man, I want some black pepper, beef and broccoli. Just omit it, but I'm loving it. I'm loving that sort of kind of blanket of spice, not like sharp, pointy, forward spice, just nice little low level heat. But really the flavor of broccoli beef is oyster sauce. This is the true flavor of broccoli beef more than anything else. Um, but I really like ginger interplaying with that, gives it again, like that same sort of warmth to it. Man, I don't know. Ira was asking earlier why there isn't broccoli chicken. Short answer is, it doesn't really get better than that. <laughs> it's just broccoli beef is too good. Uh, rice is absolutely essential, crucial part of this dish. Um, man, the, the best part of broccoli beef, in my opinion, my highly informed opinion, is the way this floret is basically just a sauce sponge and becomes like an oyster sauce gusher. When you pop this in your mouth, it just sort of explodes. <laughs> Jesus Lord. Um, but that's it. Not breaking any news here. I'm not trying to change the world, but if you like every other person in the world loves broccoli beef, you could do way worse than to make it the way I just showed you. Use a microwave to blanch your broccoli. Par cook the beef, bring it all together to the same thing. Man, that is tasty. And don't forget, cooking for kids, big chunks of ginger that you can remove. Cooking for white friends and family, long slender matchsticks that they will gnaw on as though they are uh, real food. And for Asian families, minced background flavor. That's, that's the takeaway here. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate all the support. Would extra super appreciate if you would hit that like button and then I might even be your best friend if you subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more stuff coming from the kitchen here. We are in here shooting and cooking and eating every single day. So I hope you enjoy, I hope you like, I hope you subscribe. I hope you find happiness. I'll talk to you soon.